We cannot do nothing, said the uh, Honourable Member from South West Devon. But that's not an argument for doing anything. It's an argument for doing something that works and doing something that's part of an overall strategy which has some chance of success. Uh, I find myself uh, in the unusual position. Give me a minute or two, and then perhaps I find myself in the unusual position of going to compliment uh, some uh, speeches from the Conservative benches. There are very fine speeches in this debate thus far, but some of the best uh, have come from the Conservative benches. People who are dissenting from the government's line on this debate. The right honourable member for Holton Press in a minute or two. The right honourable member for Holton Press and Howden bid this House a service by reminding us of the proportionality of what we are actually discussing here. We are discussing adding perhaps an extra two tornadoes and perhaps uh, a, a segment of typhoons to the war in terms of the bombing campaign in Syria. That is what we are discussing. We make up 10 per cent of the current flights in, a, in the Iraq. We, as the Honourable Right Honourable Member said, we will not make any conceivable difference to the air campaign in Syria where there are too many planes already chasing too many targets. I give way to my compassion. I thank the Right Honourable Gentleman for giving way, but does he not agree that the RAF has the capability to destroy ISILs or Daesh's supply and funding lines without causing any civilian casualties of note? And why, therefore, if, it, if the RAF is capable of doing that, why is the right honourable gentleman opposing this? If I could say to the honourable gentleman, the number of times I have heard the argument about minimising civilian casualties from a bombing campaign, and I, have, I bow to no one in terms of the, the skill of our pilots and sophistication of weapons, but if he actually believes that we're going to engage in a bombing campaign in a concentrated urban city area like Raqqa, and there's not going to be civilian casualties, then he is living in a different planet from any other. And as the Right Honourable Member for Holton Price and, and Howden indicated, that there is no conceivable balance of difference that we're going to make to the campaign in Syria. Now, the Prime Minister said we mustn't be haunted or hamstrung by past mistakes. And by that he meant the war in Iraq. I actually am more interested in mistakes which are far more recent in terms of this House and its decision making, and this government and its decision making. I mean, first of the mistake uh, last night uh, of describing opponents of the government's action as terrorist sympathisers. Uh, it's a hugely demeaning thing for a Prime Minister to do when he should be engaged in attempting to unite the country to concentrate on accenting divisions within the Labour Party. I mean, goodness knows I've spent a lifetime in politics uh, attacking the Labour Party and replacing them, but I have not attacked the divisions on this issue because this is a matter of war and peace. It's about sending people into conflict. And therefore, for a Prime Minister to demean himself in that way indicates that, yes, he might be successful in dividing the Labour Party, but we will fail in uniting the country, and he should have apologised when given ample opportunity to do so. The speech from the uh, honourable member, the right honourable member, the chairman of the Defence Select Committee, he reminded us that only two years ago the same Prime Minister came to this House asking to bomb the other side in the Syrian civil war. Now that can be called many things to honourable and right honourable members, but it's not the sign of a coherent military or political strategy. And then, of course, another mistake which is less thought of, and that's the mistake which spent 13 times as much bombing Libya as we did in reconstructing that country after the carnage and the total disarray and dysfunction of society that resulted. I give way to the honourable gentleman. Bring it up to more recent history. 26 September 2014. His parliamentary leader, the Right Honourable Member for Moray, voted against uh, the bombing, bombing of, uh, Iraq, of ISIL in Iraq. Would he have joined in that position, and does he maintain the opposition to operations in Iraq against uh, ISIL? As this party has been demonstrated to be correct, not least in Iraq, uh, in terms of being cautious about military interventions. Because the difficulty with military interventions is once you get in, it is hugely difficult to get out. But what I will concede to the honourable gentleman now, there is in one part of Iraq a logical reason for having an assisted bombing campaign, whether it be the US or by the 10 per cent contribution of the UK, and that is the Peshmerga forces on the ground 
probably be our only reliable ally across this region, have had some success in pushing back a Daesh. Now, I asked, because uh, the, the Prime Minister referred to this earlier on, he asked about uh, a question, didn't develop the argument about what the question I asked about why don't we accent our action in Syria as opposed to in Iraq, as opposed to diverting to Syria. What he didn't say was the second part of the question I asked at closed security briefings, incidentally. And that was to ask why hadn't we given the Peshmerga heavy armour? Why hadn't we given them heavy weapons? Why do they have to dominate the road between Mosul and Raqqa using only machine guns? I suspect the answer I wasn't given, the true answer, is because it would offend our NATO allies in Turkey, who spend as much, if not more, time bombing our allies in the Kurds than they do in pursuing the campaign against Daesh. But if I could return to the honourable gentleman who wanted something to be done. What can be done? Well, firstly, if we as a Western liberal democracy can't pursue a successful campaign of propaganda against a death cult, then we should have a very good look at ourselves. Now, I accept we've made progress at last in calling these people for what they are, as Daesh, the mocking term which mocks their claims to be a state or to represent the great religion of Islam. But much, much more can be done in carrying that forward. Infinitely more can be done in terms of interrupting and dislocating the internet strategy which they pursue. For one of our fast, smart bombs, we could have a whole squadron of people taking down their websites and stopping the communication and contaminating the mind, contaminating the mind of uh, young people across Western Europe as across the rest of the world. And above all, and here I very much agree with the leader of the Labour Party, the interruption of the financial resources without which this evil cult could not function. When I've asked the Prime Minister about this, he tells me we're sitting on a committee. For two years, nothing, little or nothing, has been done to interrupt the flow of funds, to identify and stop the financial institutions without which Daesh could not have lifted a finger against us or anyone else. And finally, I would say this. We are being asked to intervene in a bloody civil war of huge complexity. We're being asked to do it without an exit strategy and no reasonable means of saying we're going to make a difference. We should not give the Prime Minister that permission. Yeah. Yeah.